It's quite smooth. Oh, hello there. You just caught me playing with my knob. An orc knob. My first knob, in fact. But I'll put him away while we do this video. So it's not Optimus Prime, it is time to prime. And I do apologise for that joke, but I am going to keep it in. So the Horus Heresy Build, Paint and Play project, we've changed the name of that many, many times over this series of videos, which you can in fact watch here if you so wish. If you want to watch it from the start, or maybe the middle, or maybe from the newest video all the way back to the oldest. I think they get better as they go along. If they don't, if they get worse as they go along, let us all know in the comments below. I'm pretty sure they get better. So in our last session or video or episode, we fixed some issues we had with our models before we could paint them, such as sticking on some broken shoulder pads and arms and things. Apparently I look like a strong man now. Now since we've fixed them issues, we can now begin the painting. But before we can do our main colour painting, we have to prime the miniatures, which is a very, very important step. I mean, you might not have to prime, but I don't think I've ever tried it. I would always recommend priming. So in this video, we're going to show you how I prime my miniatures. And I think this is one of the best ways that you can do it. It's definitely a safe way, that's for sure. Not safe way the shop. I think that's gone. I think that's now become Morrison's. Did Morrison's take over Safeway? Like the early or late 90s? It's been a while. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Let's jump in and have a look. All right then, so to begin with, I'm going to have to admit I'm using Chaos Black Spray. I was originally considering trying a different, cheaper brand, perhaps like Halfords, but didn't want to perform any tests today. For the sake of a couple of pounds, I felt it would be best to stick with what I know. One of these cans can spray a fair few miniatures, and it's always good for efficiency to prime as many as possible at one time. Now to prime the miniatures in batches, we need to attach them to something. You can buy some sort of elasticated, dedicated handle grip from Games Workshop for mega bucks, but I have a piece of wood which cost cheapo pennies. Try and do this in a well-ventilated area, such as outside. It was far too windy for me outside, so I had to move into the garage, but at least it's not the bedroom. Mrs. Snakeworks wouldn't appreciate that. Now, to attach your miniatures to those handles, you need a mounting agent. I was sitting on this double-sided tape by Gorilla. It's way overpriced, and I'm sure with a bit of poking around, you could find a cheaper option. You know, like at the range or B&M, something like that. There's always a cheaper version. I then attached the double-sided tape to the handle in a nice long strip. This stuff is really fat and chunky, so I am expecting good things from it. I wonder how many miniatures I will be able to prime at once. What do you reckon? Answers in the comments below. Okay, to make it double-sided, you have to take the other backing tape off, and I actually struggled here. I can't find the end, and I can't peel it off. I have a feeling I might need both hands for this and have to do it off camera. I'm sorry about that and I apologise. There probably is an easier way to do this if you read the instruction manual, which I didn't. So these Gorilla glues and things I always find are very expensive and they never really seem quite up to snuff. I bought some of the super glue once and it felt like it wouldn't even come out of the bottle, it was so thick. When it did came out, when it did came out, and when it did come out, it almost seemed that if it had, oh, this is really hard to say. And when it did come out, it almost seemed as if it had gone off inside the bottle before it even used it. What are your experiences with Gorilla products? <laughs> I looked a bit like King Kong there. So even though Gorilla products are expensive, the Horus Heresy products aren't actually that bad. Expec X, mm, especially the box set, which is an absolute bargain. If you want to get your own, you can check out the link up here somewhere. That is an affiliate link, by the way. So the backing tape is off and I have made a mess already. Using my Braid Star Strength of the Bear. Strength of the Bear! The Bear! The Bear! The Bear! The bear. <laughs> I 
I somehow managed to pull it back off the handle. Damn it. A little poking still put it back in place though. It should still work as intended, it's only a sticky strip. Then using my fingers, we then put the miniatures on the handle. I learned after doing this a few times, you can actually put them quite close together. They're not too bothered about personal space. Try and get them as close enough together as to maximize space, but also far enough apart to get to all of the angles. It doesn't even matter if you mix miniature types on the handle. You can see I have a mix of marines, terminators and characters. They love to mingle. There's no fears of unit mixing or squad coherency here. We are painting, not gaming, I hope. I even managed to get the Dreadnought on the same handle, so I was very pleased. There were a lot of miniatures, so there's still a load more out of shot. This is the whole boxed set, remember. I think a nice number to do at once would be about 20 or 30 miniatures. After that, it does get a bit unwieldy. Now, before we start spraying, we need to wear our mask. This is to prevent breathing in any fumes, especially if you're not outside. We then spray the miniatures. I'm actually faking it here in this clip as I didn't want to get overspray all over my camera lens. But the only difference is I'm not pressing the button. If you do want a more detailed set of instructions on how to use it, you could read the instructions on the can. I don't think anyone ever did that though. There's some part about turning the can upside down and spraying it until the can shoots only gas or something. I've never done that in all of my years. Now the interesting thing with these rattle cans, once back in the day I primed my epic army with my cousin at the time and he was reading on the can that you have to turn the can upside down when you've finished spraying and spray some more to get the last of the gas out or something until it ran clear. So he was adamant he was going to have a go at this and I was quite worried. So anyway, he turned the can over, started spraying and it was just spraying paint everywhere. An absolute waste. So either we did that wrong or it was a lie. If you know which way or the other, then please let us all know in the comments below. One day I might try it again, but I don't think I will. So after a while spraying and getting a sore wrist, all the miniatures are now primed and ready for the next stage. You can see they're not bare plastic anymore. Now they're black. You can get different colored primers, so get the one you want. A lot of people will tell you gray is the best, but as I need a black base coat, we went with black. Maybe we shall try grey next time. I then spent what seemed like forever removing all the miniatures from the handles and laid them all out on the table. I realised I only displayed them like this to take some footage, so please be appreciative. They then went back in the box, the heresy box. I was actually surprised they all fit in there to be honest. It might make a good carry case in future, or storage box perhaps. Okay, so our next stage is tidy ups. There's normally a couple of missed parts where the aerosol spray didn't hit and I want that sorted out. There's only ever usually a couple of patches under the armpits and their crotches, so this is what we're going to do. Firstly, we mount them on handles again, individually this time. I need to invent a handle that attaches individual handles. For those wondering, I still do have an infected finger, but it's well on the way to recovery. You can see how it's made my nail grow a bit weird. It's a bit disgusting, but I feel it needs documenting. For future reference, you know. Also, I didn't paint my nails on purpose, like Mrs. Snakeworks asked. It's from the spray. Honest. Now, a few of you have been asking how my fingers are lately. And I have to admit, if you have a look at this, it's actually a lot better. Can you see that? Doesn't like filming my fingers. Anyway, you'll have to take my word for it. My finger is a, a lot better now. The nail still looks a bit wonky, but it's all growing as it should be again now. I think it's not going to fall off anytime soon, I hope. But it was strange because I was really ill over Christmas, which I think is why my finger was infected. <laughs> I just had so many infections. We started off with the virus over the Christmas period. We got over that about a week later. And then I had foot and mouth, which I somehow caught off my son. I looked it up 
and I think the word for it is herpangina, something like that. It's quite hard to say. The herp in it sounds like snake, which is strange because we are snake works, isn't it? Hmm. But anyway, that really wrecked my throat. I could barely talk. I had blisters all around the back of my throat. I didn't get any of the blisters on my feet or fingers, though. But I wouldn't recommend catching that one. You wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy. Now, it was just after Christmas when I was working on this part, so we still had a lot of Christmas chocolate left over. But I felt this would be a good time to take a break. I didn't have a Kit Kat. 10 internet cookies if you get that reference, but I did have this nice dairy milk block and a Robin's ball. Not Robin from Batman, but the bird. I'm now attaching all the marines and parts to handles. I only have six proper handles, so I use these old empty paint pots. Veterans may remember these ones. I've been using them for years for this, with a bit of blue tack on the top. I wonder if the paint inside is still usable. So I ran out of pots and had to find something else. Not wanting to drink 30 bottles of wine, I bought some wine corks. These ones have slits for putting paper in. I think they might be for some sort of craft, as they came from Hobbycraft. I think its actual purpose is wedding invite signs or placemats or something. You can put pieces of paper in there. It's not very sturdy though, so I don't think I would actually use them for their intended purpose. Better for holding miniatures, although actual miniature holders are still better, or old paint pots even. Now make sure you attach the miniatures solidly. You don't want them falling off when painting. I use the upside down test. If it falls off, it wasn't attached well enough. Trouble is, if it does fail, it can sometimes break the miniature, so maybe don't do this test unless you're very confident. To mount odds and ends, you can use cocktail sticks. I jammed a stick inside the barrel of these las cannons and it was a pretty good fit. The hole really gripped the shaft well. I was very happy. Some of these things can be quite awkward to hold when priming, so this shafting method really helps. Another odd shaped part was this dreadnought missile pod thing. Again, I poked the shaft into any hole I could find. Luckily, there were some tight options. Again, I was very happy. It's always better to use a hole rather than just putting some blue tack on or something. It can sometimes cover up the areas you might want to paint. Now, a lot of people paint in sub-assemblies, myself included. I've done it since the year dot way back when. Quite a creaky chair here. But I always wondered if it's actually worth it. Do you actually save time or do you lose time? Have any of you tried to paint it with and without? I want to know if it's really worth painting in sub assemblies. Might do some experiments. I think it probably is quicker. It's just a bit annoying. After a lot of mounting, blue tacking and cocktail stick shafting, we had everything mounted for the next stage, which I told you is to get any bits we missed. I'm starting to think maybe I should have mounted them like we did at the start, but again that was the reason we missed these areas in the first place, so I think we're on the right track. I hope. Amusingly, those slits did come in handy. I was able to poke the wires into them so they were grasped nicely. It now looks like a bug or something. I shall call this one a buggy boy. If you're wondering what these odd bits are, they're the Laz cannon wires from the Spartan, but you knew that, right? I set up my temporary airbrush station, a nice big cardboard box. Always keep big boxes, they come in handy. This one was from a food ninja, 2023's hottest kitchen item. I also opened the window for a bit of fresh air, even though I'm wearing a mask. There's a lot of minis to do, so I don't want it building up. Oh, by the way, I'm not in the garage anymore. I'm in the temporary studio. Ah, we have a problem. I'm looking for my black paint, but I've moved house and my paints are all chucked into boxes. I hope none of them have leaked. Anyway, let's have a little rummage. This is a bit like the lucky dip from a first school fate. Who knows what we might find in here? Hopefully not a mousetrap. We seem to have found it. I'm going to use Vallejo model colour black, a very nice black. It covers well and is well black. Let's go back to the cardboard box airbrush station, shall we? Come along, children. 
Now I have here something rather special. This is a Rogue Trader era Land Raider box. This one has seen better days as you can see. But interestingly, if you look at the side of the box, which is here before it falls apart, it says on here, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you, Edward. If you are enjoying the content here on the channel, then please consider joining the Patreon. The link to which is in the description below or up here somewhere. My script ran across the room then. So at the airbrush station, I have collected together these airbrush additives and supplies. There's an airbrush cleaner for cleaning, obviously, a thinner to thin your paints, which works a lot better than water, don't use water, and flow improver, which helps prevent tip dry. That's where paint dries up and clogs your airbrush. It's probably actually for something else, but that's what I use it for. I then don my mask to begin work. This is my Moldex mask that's quite old now and probably does need replacing. Still, it's better than nothing, I reckon. I do want a full air fed. Uh, Daniel, can you get me an air fed, please? He knows what I mean. Hello, Daniel. I then airbrush any areas we missed with the aerosol primer, covering up any grey patches. Grey patches sounds like a name for a rabbit or something. Feel free to use it if you so wish. Maybe I should write a book. Not very good at writing. So after a few seconds, we have this, a 100% primed marine. No missing patches and totally ready for painting. Well, when it dries. This is exactly what we need to begin painting. If we had left those patches, we might have had some issues down the line. They say four hours sharpening the ax is better than two hours chopping the tree. Or is it the other way around? After a few minutes, we have this. A whole army now properly primed and ready for the actual painting to begin. Are you excited? Because I am. I'm really looking forward to getting some colour on these and having an army to play with on the table. We are months behind schedule now. How are you guys getting on with yours? So as you can see, all the miniatures are now primed and ready to go. We can now begin the painting process, finally at last after about six or seven months. If you want to see some more of these Horus Heresy painting project log episodes, I know you do, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. As always, thank you very much for watching and always remember to drill your barrels.